To run an iOptics test, select Toolbox to bring up a view of the available modules that are present on the platform. Next, select NetBlazer. As this is booting up, please note that as you run this iOptics test you need to put a physical loopback on the pluggable that you are testing. Once the NetBlazer menu is open, at the top left, select Test Configurator. Now you can see the available pluggables and their respective ports. The pluggable with the green check indicates it is ready to test. By selecting more you are able to view all of the criteria of the transceiver known as the device under test. Now close the screen. In the test sequence box, adjustments can be made but most likely you will only adjust the BERT duration for a longer test. Select test applications followed by iOptics which will highlight orange when active. Click the start button to commence the test. A red highlight around the laser triangle icon will indicate the beginning of the testing process. You will also notice a laser icon on the bottom left of the screen indicating the laser is on and the power level is also displayed. The first test will be an in and out interface quick check. Notice the power consumption and temperature indicators in the lower section of the screen. Green check marks will indicate a successful pass throughout this test series. Next up is the optical transmit test where it is testing the actual transmit out of the transmit site pluggable. The next test is the optical receive test, followed by the bit error test, ensuring the integrity of the pluggable. Some pluggables will follow with the excessive SKU test. Once complete, a prompt asking if you would like to save a copy of the test data will appear. This is a good time to turn off the laser. In this example, we select No because we want to create a report by clicking the report icon. In the report interface, there are options to enter a job ID, the contractor name, and a circuit ID, amongst other things. The circuit ID may be very helpful when dealing with a trouble report to provide documentation as to what went wrong with it. A comment section allows entering additional details. After entering a report header and report title, clicking the Save Report button will generate a report file and you may choose the file type you prefer which will provide an entire summary of what took place in the test. 